Hey everybody, Economic Ninja here. I got a bunch of headlines to go over today. We're going to talk about them. Everything from Russia defaulting, another bird flu uh, situation. We've got a uh, 10 year and two year yields and how they could affect real estate. Uh, there's just a lot going on and actually probably some other things hidden in here. All right, so first off, we're going to start with Russia. Maybe cut off from the world's lender of last resort as bonds head towards default. Now, we've seen headline after headline in the last few days that Russia is headed for a default. Uh, the IMF uh, at first was sort of like, yeah, it's, it's probably not going to happen. Now they're saying, okay, it's going to happen. And, but it's okay, it's not going to really affect a lot. And they're talking about, you know, a couple of, you know, $20 billion worth of debt, all right? So I'm here to tell you that I think it's going to be uh, a little worse than that, and I'll tell you why. So first off, uh, the G7 nations nations want to cut off Russia's access to emergency funding from organizations like the IMF and the World Bank. Well, I can guarantee you one thing. I'm sure that uh, Putin is saying, I don't need you anyway. We're good. We've got this. The facts are they have combined with China because we uh, MasterCard and Visa pulled out of Russia. Um, uh, they said, no problem. China goes, we got a solution and just start switching over to our credit card processing company, right? Uh, the fact is that Russia and China already have a, a solution to uh, not only deal with not having access to SWIFT, but to completely take over SWIFT because they already have tons of, uh, of agreements worldwide with countries to do trade in. Well, what, what about what happens when they go, well, we need to do that trade now, okay? We gotta, you know, we're gonna sell you some oil or we're gonna buy this from you or whatever in your currency or ours. And uh, how are we gonna get the money to you? Well, normally they would use SWIFT code, but now they get to go, hey, and by the way, we've got this amazing system. It's called SIPS and it's cheaper and faster. It's more efficient than using SWIFT. Think about this, everybody. These countries are gonna go, yeah, okay, cool. Let's I'm gonna give you money, you're gonna give me stuff, and vice versa. Yeah, it works. As long as we get it happen, no problem. You are literally watching the world's economic system being split in two. This is absolutely mind-blowing to me because people care more about Kanye West and, and whatever, whoever the girl is, Kardashian, you know, about their marriage drama because that's what's trending on Twitter and, and Google and all that other stuff. The fact is... The world is changing drastically right now, and most people are completely oblivious to it. They're like, who's gonna be the new anchor on uh, Fox Sports? I mean, that's like, that's today's news, right? So, right now I do believe that the 20 billion, that's one thing, there's gonna be bondholders that are gonna not get paid. I get that. But I believe it's gonna actually be a little bit worse because the ramifications of them going on to SIPs and, and using you know China's credit card processing systems over MasterCard Visa, that means that's it's like tearing off the Band-Aid all at once. It was like, you know, having to leave a job, but you just, you felt comfortable, but you didn't really like it. And then finally, let's say you got fired and you're like, oh my gosh, the worst thing ever. But you started doing your side gig full time. And within six months to a year, you're totally, you know, happy, you're successful, you're crushing it. And you're going, why didn't I do this sooner? I have a feeling Russia and China are having that moment just about right now. Now, let's move on. Uh, China's new COVID lockdowns are another threat to the economy. Um, so obviously there's a lot of COVID stuff going on in China. They have a zero COVID policy. They're locking things down. And one of the places they locked down was essentially their version of Silicon Valley, their tech hub. And it just became very clear that Apple's main, one of Apple's main suppliers have just closed their doors and there's about to be that breakdown. Now we've talked about the supply chain breakdown coming because of what I believe is gonna happen in the next you know, few weeks that uh, People are going to want to get out and live and they're just going to sort of bombard the system and it's going to cause these chain reactions like traffic and you know if you look at a traffic pattern you know when you're stopped in traffic you're like what's going on there's no accident up ahead and all it was was one guy that just wanted to pass somebody and they were going a little slow to pass that person and as people started coming up to them they hit their brakes well now the reaction time for the next one hit their brakes before you know it that they went from slowing down to a dead stop about a mile back and there was never any kind of accident, right? It's all about reaction time. That's what happens in the economy as well, reaction time. And that's what here on the channel, The Economic Ninja, I want you guys to build up your reaction time. Take that defensible space on the highway for between you and the car in front of you. You do the same thing with your finance. How do you build defensible space? You have a savings, you have less debt, you have cash flow coming in. That gives you a defensible space that you can act and react before a crash in the economy and take advantage of it, all right? So it says, you know, they're obviously, you know, you're gonna see supply chain disasters now again because China's locking down for COVID, all right? 
Now, bird flu thing, it's very interesting. I did that video earlier today and you have so many people going, ah, it's fake, it's fake. And I'm like, you guys are nuts. Like you got a lot of certain people in this world that have just been, just been, just built into this trance, like all news is fake, all news is fake. There's actually news that's not fake. Like when you see video and like real things, like there's news that's not fake, but some people are like, oh, I just, nothing's real, nothing's real anymore. Well, I'm gonna tell you why I believe, personally, I believe that this is real news because the mainstream is not talking about it and it's the small, very small news outlets talking about it. And not only that, we've been following this story ever since it was in China and moved into Israel and then moved into Africa and it moved into Europe and now it's here. It's a developing story. Now, I talked about how one um, uh, herd of uh, chickens, a flock of chickens, of about you know, almost a million were affected by this in Iowa. And I said, that's just one example. There's lots out there. Well, just now, oh here, I'm gonna have to step back. I was watching a story that came out out of uh, usnews.com and it said, uh, bird flu spreads to US poultry farms, right? But it says right here, about 4 million commercially raised chickens and turkeys have been killed since February, since February, all right? To outbreaks of highly lethal type of bird flu. But check this out, just a couple hours later, and it lists in this article, it starts listing like the Iowa flock of 915,000, Maryland flock of 150,000. Then it says Delaware, now this is very interesting, Delaware, bird flu hit a commercial poultry farm with 1.1 million birds in February, right? Now that was in February, Delaware, 1.1 million. Check out the headline just two hours ago. Wisconsin flock, hold on, let me make sure I got this right. Delaware, it's Delaware and Wisconsin, aren't they the same place? Jeez, no. So we're talking about Delaware, right? 1.1 million birds. Now look at this, just a couple hours later, a Wisconsin flock, of 2.75 million chickens are to be culled as bird flu spreads in the US. Another 2.75 million chickens are going to be killed because of what's going on. That's just in Wisconsin. When I say this is a developing story, I mean it is very real time right now and is being uh, very widely under reported, all right? Because Kanye West and his ex-wife are arguing. So I guess, you know, you gotta give him that. Um, so that's a big deal. I think it's very, very important to look at that. Now, in closing, the 10-year yield hits 2.14%, its highest points since uh, July of 2019. This is very, very important. It's going to affect mortgage rates. Not only that, it's hit a max high, but it's also the two-year, the two-year note right now, Treasury, rises to 1.847, right? To give you some data points on that, it's the largest one day yield gain since Wednesday, March 2nd of 2022. If you remember, that was when everybody was diving in and, uh, uh, tr and scared about what is going on in the market, in the economy as everything was closing down. Sorry, I'm getting phone calls like crazy, my phone's blowing up. Uh, that's not, that wasn't the close down, I'm thinking March 2020. What I'm saying is that's the last time it moved this high. The yield is up for six consecutive trading days because people are fearful. The yield is up 0.357 percentage points over the last six trading days. Guys, that is a big move in the two year. The reason why the two year is moving up so rapidly, it's exploding to the upside. People are fearful that the, the tens and twos, the yield curve inversion, that means that people are more willing to dive into short-term debt than long-term because they believe that that something bad is coming. It's the market telling you. Sorry, my mind's spinning right now. It's always when I start recording, my phone starts exploding. It's like somebody's watching me somewhere. Point being is this, the market knows something is up and they're starting to move to do it. You saw Bill Gates, the news, where he got completely out of the stock market. I'm not saying sell all your stocks. That's not financial advice. What I am saying is that we are seeing a very serious time in the markets. We're seeing, you know, you're seeing nuclear threats, nuclear, nuclear, nuclear. There's a lot of fear in the markets. What I want people to do is stay calm and think clearly and act decisively. That is very, very important in this day and age. All right, guys? With that being said, I better go answer some of these phone calls. The Economic Ninja is out.